Hi guys. So in the last lecture we talked about quadratic variation for Brownian motion. And I showed you that quadratic variation is given by limit as the largest time step basically goes to zero. And if we sum from j equals zero to n minus one, w t j plus one minus w of t j square. This was the formula for calculating quadratic variation. And as we make the time step smaller and smaller and smaller, this basically goes to t almost surely. Okay, or basically Brownian motion accumulates quadratic variation at one per unit time. Okay, so let's try to understand this a little bit better right now. And let's try to do one thing. Let's try to define a series of random variables given by y j plus one. And this is going to be equal to w of t j plus one minus w of t j by square root of t plus one minus t j. And if you remember from a previous discussion, we had, you know, we had uh, split time into n different uh, time intervals given by t0, t1, t2, all the way to tn. And we said tn is equal to t, t0 is equal to 0. And that time we had said that these time increments don't necessarily have to be equal to one another. Okay, but for this particular discussion, let's assume that these time increments are equal to one another. And they and time increment given by tj plus 1 minus tj are all equal to t by n. Okay? So we are assuming that these time intervals are going to be equal to t by n. Right? Now, since yj plus 1 is equal to increment of a Brownian motion, okay, all of these different random variables, yj plus 1s, are going to be independent of one another. Okay, because they're independent of a Brownian motion, non-overlapping in increment of a Brownian motion is independent of one another. Hence, all of these random variables are also going to be independent of one another, right? And they're going to be normally distributed because each of these Brownian motion increments is normally distributed, right? And what is the expected value of this? Expected value of y j plus 1 would be just equal to 0, right? Because expected value of increment of a Brownian motion, as we talked about, was equal to zero. And variance of y j plus one is equal to, we are multiplying it by one by square root of this, tj plus one minus tj, that would get squared. So we'll get tj plus one minus tj. And variance of this, variance of this, this basically, as I said, is normally distributed. Uh, and we, when we are talking about brown in, brown in motion, we saw that the variance of this was equal to tj plus 1 minus tj, right? So this would cancel out and we will get 1. So yj plus 1, in other words, basically is independent from one another and they are standard normal, right? With mean of 0 and variance equals to 1. Now we can rewrite this equation. We could say v w of tj plus 1 minus w of tj is equal to y of j plus 1 square root of tj plus 1 minus tj. Right?